So in our last class assignment, we looked at a leaf. We looked at this oak leaf um, here. We did some tracing of the leaf just by doing an outline and then filling it in, figuring out where the, where, like, mapping it out. It kind of looks like an oak leaf globe, doesn't it? And then using darker pencils, the 4B, the 2B, and the HB, going up um, in, in darkness and, and softness in pencil, um, we put in the darks and therefore preserve the highlights and put in the darks for this particular leaf. Now, if you've watched that video, um, awesome, we're ready to keep going. If you haven't watched that video, go ahead and go back and watch it. Um, if you want to download the references, you can do that through Patreon. If you're a Patreon subscriber, then you can download the references, the photo references, and my sketches and all that stuff. And there will be um, there are actual blog posts that go with most of my videos here on YouTube. So it's a side piece to this. So. If you have watched that, that's awesome. If you haven't, go back and do it again. The other thing I wanted to mention is you can watch it in fast forward just by changing the speed on YouTube. So down in the right corner, there's one of those little uh, gear symbols. And if you click on that gear symbol, it's down in the right. Um, if you click on that, then it will ask, there's, there's a pop-up and it says speed, and you can click on the speed and then you can go slower or faster, up to two times faster, up to one time, or two times slower, so that I will talk like a chipmunk or talk really, really slowly. So I would go ahead and speed that up so that you can still hear what I'm saying, but it's faster. Um, and if you want to do it with me, then you can slow it down or pause it, anything like that. So let's start. Uh, today, we've done this already, I want to now take what we've learned here and apply it to our leaf. So in today's class, we're gonna work on maybe one or two of these leaves. I'm not gonna do the whole thing. So down here, we've got this coming like this. Um, and we've got the green running through the center. Now this was all done freehand, but it was done with a mechanical pencil, and I find that when I'm using a really sharp, like a pe mechanical pencil, obviously it does better there, um, 0.3 is the one I like to use, um, I get really beautiful drawings. When I use anything that's a little more chunky, I don't. It's not nearly as detailed. Okay, so the first thing I want to do with this, with what I'm going to do today when I'm painting um, this leaf, is I'm going to drop in some water. Now already, as I'm turning my head and looking at this from an angle, I can see that the water is soaking in right away. Now, using the colors that are already on my palette, these are the colors I've been using for quite some time now. So we have the same ones as before. We have raw umber, burnt umber, uh, sap green, permanent green, olive. Those are pretty much the colors on here. There's a little bit of lemon yellow and Indian yellow and probably yellow ochre somewhere in here too. This is definitely sap green over there. So I'm just going to activate these. And I also want to spray my palette. So I'm going to come back and wet it one more time. And that water is soaking in. It's kind of building up on the inside. I'm going to wet it again because I hadn't wet my palette because I just started. There it is. We want to go from a shine to more of a matte color, almost. Now I'm going to go down to a small brush. This is a uh, point. And what I want to do is drop the color in and allow it to spread. Now I'm going to work pretty quickly. See how it spreads out beautifully? Now, if it doesn't, if it doesn't spread out perfectly, just come back, just damp your, wet your brush, and then come back with that slightly wet brush and rub it along the edge. Don't worry if it's like, oh no, it's drying, what do I do now? And again, this is exactly the same as here. Um, we're just getting that foundation color down. So this leaf is different, obviously. It's shaped and twisted a totally different way. Just 
Okay, this is the part where I start slowing down a bit. So, again, if you want, you can speed through. Just change the settings on this video, and then you can watch it much quicker. And I will fast forward a few little moments. You probably notice that the sound of the fan downstairs will go away. So I am wiggling my brush. And this is just my sample to show you guys. I'm wiggling my brush like this in an erratic, organic shape. Okay, it's a line, but it's a wiggle. The other option is I could actually lift my brush and create wiggly lines, but coming up in the middle. So it's like a stippling. Now a stippling would be more like perfect dots. And footprints are going to be like this, where you really push the brush all the way to the ground and you get these long, the whole print of the side of your brush. And depending on how you do them, nice and close, or even overlapping, you get a different effect. So what I'm doing is more of something like this, uh, because that's just the way I like to paint. At the same time, dropping in a few spots, so it's like stippling into the wet paint, right? And it's going to separate, and then also dropping in a few drops. So let's do exactly that here. This is more of a stipple. Let's add a little bit of permanent olive mixed with uh, burnt umber. And remember we did in the last uh, class when we did the sketch and we learned where the shadows are. So I know by looking over here, I know that if this was this, there's going to be that shadow. So now, not even looking at it, it's very easy for me to just draw in where I think the shadows and the brown should be because I've already drawn them. Okay, if you find that your lines are too sharp, just come back with a little bit of water. Because we've let all this soak in for a few seconds, when we come back with water, only bits of it are going to move. The paint that's on the surface loose is going to move, but you're going to have darker spots because other parts have soaked in more. Down here I'm going to add clear water. And again, a very erratic, kind of wiggly way, like down here. Now let's drop in some color and see what happens. It's going to connect those lines. Coming down the other side, let's just add water. I'm going to be using a bigger brush. And this water is a little dirty, um, which is great because you guys can see it. So that's also on purpose. I just want to get a little layer of water on there. And this is more of a wet and wet technique from the get go. I'm going to leave that white line in the middle because I want to preserve those highlights. Just gently and slowly paint around it. And depending on the quality of paper you're using, you could lift your highlights back out. Um, if you use well, any brush, any hog hair brush will work. Um, a flat brush, a chisel brush. Mm. Yeah, it's all different types. But essentially something that's stiff and short. If you want to erase, if you want to lift, that's a different story. You can use almost any brush to, um, to lift. So just... 
Again, dropping in this color. I'm going to let it flow, but I want this middle vein here to be really sharp. So, take a moment, breathe, hold the brush, concentrate, stop talking. <laughs> It's all still wet. I've got it in there. It's blended out beautifully, but it's just wet enough that now I can, and this is a little different than above, I can add by dropping the, the paint in and letting it disperse, and that will sharpen up that line and define some of these shadow areas over here. And we're assuming, or I'm assuming in this case, that this whole bottom part is kind of under shadow. I'm also doing it separately with a different technique so you guys can see uh, the two ways. So if I think it's too much, just clean my brush, come back with a drop of water. Maybe I want that to flow a little better. Okay, so this practice piece um, serves for two different purposes. One, so you guys can see what I'm doing. But it also serves as a practice for me. So I haven't painted anything today. So this is like my little warm up to loosen my hand and to gain a little bit of confidence before I tackle a piece that I've been working on for a while and I don't want to mess it up. And I can also feel, I think I want to do this technique on some of it or this technique as a foundation and that on top. But I wouldn't know that um, if I hadn't taken the time to just do a miniature. And I know you're probably thinking, yes, but that's going to take so long, my goodness. Well, the thing about art is, one, it's all practice, and two, time doesn't matter. If you're an artist, you're not thinking about how long it takes to make something. You're doing it because it feeds your soul. And that's not a bad question, actually. What do you guys think about that? Do you, do you feel that painting feeds your soul? Um... You know, it just, it just overwhelms this feeling of I have to paint, I have to paint, I have to paint. And I think the longer we ignore that feeling, the more likely the feeling is going to go away. It's just like food craving. If we ignore the food craving, um, it will eventually go away and we won't crave food anymore. We won't crave bad foods. We won't have those cravings. But in the sense of art, it's like you're suppressing. You're pushing it down and suppressing that, that urge to be artistic. So I am painting around the veins. I want to put that color down and come in and pull it out. Come back with my water. Just move it around. What I want to do in the first pass is get the paint on the page. Blot or block out where it's going to go.
Okay, because it's still wet, I can now dab the color in and allow it to mix and blend out too. Now I want to add a little bit of brown in this one. I think this is a little too bluey. So we've got the May Green, the Burnt Umber, Raw Umber, and the mix of the Permanent Olive Green and the Burnt Umber. Burnt Umber is actually a lot darker than that. It looks more like this. And coming up on the other side, let's come down here and do the back side of that vein. Nice and slow. Breathe, concentrate, relax, loose hands, stop talking. It's funny when I say that, but it's very true. There's a highlight in the middle here, that white spot, so we're going to leave that. Just kind of walk up, work around it. I want to drop more color in there. Bring that a little bit of water this way. brown. Down here. So I will let this dry a little bit and then I'll put a little bit of water to get that to soften on that edge. But I think I've got at least a minute or two before I do that. So Instead, I want to go this way and work on that part. Here, the same thing. Let's just bring that down here. And now this side has dried a little bit. And of course I can push the paint back by just scooping it, literally just pushing it in the direction I want to go. Make sure that your edges are crisp. Um, soft edges are good too, but you don't want them fraying or fuzzy. You want them to either go out and smooth out to nothing or be crisp if you want the piece to stand out from your paper. That's really important. So up here, this doesn't make a lot of sense. So I would take out that little bit there and Maybe paint in this piece.
I'm doing so I'm going to add a whole shadow here. Turning it over so that we can work from this side. And it would be better if I turn it this way. I'm going to lift up some color and then paint this side of this vein. So remembering the vein goes to a point at the end. Okay, where's our next vein here? Ooh, way down there. Okay, there's one that goes here and there's one way down here. So let's put this one in first. Do it any way you want. And I'm just doing it differently every time. Don't forget, we can always make these lines smaller later. It's not nearly as easy to uh, recover them if we paint them in. So, put down the line, then put some water to disperse the paint, smooth it out. So, for the last one, let's use this little bit of white there. So now I might come back and add um, a few more spots because it's still, it looks really good, uh, but it's also very, um, I don't know, I think it's a little boring, it just doesn't look quite finished. So I might come back and add a few more dark spots, right where I know the dark spots were, here on the leaf. Here. 
And that is a lot of stippling right there. And then up here. Okay, and then I would let this dry. Now the final thing I'm going to do, or would do, um, on a piece like this, is we come back, and clean up these lines, make them really, really small. And just by closing them from both sides, and I would some yellow paint, something yellow, maybe an Indian yellow, um, across the vein because I can see that it is definitely a yellow vein, not a white vein. So in that sense I'd be glazing the whole thing. There we go, and the smaller we make these, the more delicate they're going to look. So, now that I have gone to the trouble of working this leaf out, I can now <laughs> take some time to do these leaves. <laughs> but I think we're going to leave it um, right there for this class. Thanks for watching. I'm Scarlett, and I will see you in the next lesson. Don't forget, if you, if you didn't see the previous lesson, you're going to want to go back and watch that too. And you can also go over to Patreon, and if you're a Patreon subscriber, um, you can get the reference photos of the leaves I'm using and some of the sketches and different pictures and stuff will all be on there for most of my tutorials. Thanks for watching. Toodaloo!